Well, good morning, Shoreline. It is a gorgeous day, is it not? Amen. We are gathered here, whether you're gathered here in the courtyard or whether you're down here in the parking lot. I love it. Look, we got tailgaters in the parking lot. This is amazing. Or whether you're online, thank you for joining us as we continue in our journey through this series we're in. It's uh, looking at Elijah or Elisha, these two men of courageous faith. And so as we embark in our fourth week of our four-week journey, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. We're going to look at Elisha today. Elisha. And so today I just want to tackle this idea that, that God blesses us bigger than we can imagine, bigger than we can handle. God's blessings. And we talked a little bit about that. I love the way Pastor Keith put it. The blessing of, of having his daughter come to know Jesus Christ and seeing her eternity change and for generations to come. This beautiful reminder to us. And blessings. You know, we use that word a lot, don't we, around church. But blessings are simply the benefits, the mercies, the grace, the provision, the protection, and everything in between that God, our good, good Father, provides blessings. And blessings that we're reminded by the, James writes in James 1.17, he says that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not, who does not change like shifting shadows. That great reminder to us that these blessings, the source is God, God Almighty. And we have so many blessings, do we not? We're sitting here in the warmth of the beautiful sun and this beautiful courtyard, or we're gathered at home, snuggled up on our couch, or down here in the parking lot. We have so many blessings. It is sometimes easy to overlook, and sometimes it's so easy just to take for granted. So I want you just to participate in an exercise with me this morning, if you will. You ready? Okay, so what I want you to do is everybody take a big, deep breath. Take it in. Now blow it out. I want to take your hand. I want you to put it over there on your heart. I want you to find your heart beat. Hear that? Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. I want you to think about this. That every breath of your lungs and every beat of your heart is a blessing from your good, good Father. With every breath, with every beat, our God says, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. God's blessing at its simplest form. And when you calculate the number of times that you, you breathe in, you breathe out, and you calculate the number of times that your heart beats throughout your lifetime, I mean, it's, it's astounding to even think about it. And then when you couple in all the other benefits and grace and mercy and protection and provisions, it's just, it's just bigger than we can imagine. And what we find is that God's blessings are bigger than we can handle, but not too big for us to share, amen? Too big for us to handle, but not too big for us to share. And that's my main point today, as we look at the prophet Elisha, and we're going to look just at a snapshot at the life of Elisha. And you remember Elisha from Pastor Kevin's teaching last week. Elisha was just an ordinary man who did extraordinary things for God. You remember what Elisha was doing when he was called by God through the prophet Elijah? He was a farmer plowing with his oxen. Ordinary life, but God called him into extraordinary path. Extraordinary. And so when I think of Elisha, two words come to mind. Courageous and compassionate. Courageous and compassionate. And when you look at the book of 2 Kings, and you look through that, you'll see Elisha. There are times when Elisha is confronting kings, and he's confronting rulers. Courage to stand in the gap. But then there's also times like we're going to explore today in 2 Kings chapter 4, where we see Elisha demonstrating just care and compassion. So Elisha, a man of courage and compassion. And he had the courage to ask for double the spirit. Do you remember in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, his words, it said, When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. 
Now, if you were here or you had a chance to watch Pastor Kevin's teaching last week, you know that Elisha wasn't asking for like material blessings. He wasn't asking for fame and notoriety. He was saying, if I can just get some of the, the zeal, the, the, the passion, the conviction, the, the, just the courage that you have, Elijah, I'd ask for a double blessing, just a double portion of that spirit. And that's the blessing. He, God doubled the blessing to Elisha. And what did he do with it? What did Elisha do? Did he use it for his own personal gain? No. He used it as a vessel for God's blessing. Elisha was a vessel for God's blessing, blessing others with the blessing that God had poured out onto him. And so what I want to do is I want to look closer at one of those scenes from Elisha's life. And we're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. So if you have your, your Bible or if you have your Bible app, I want to encourage you to go ahead and open it up there. And we're going to look at this story. And what we're going to do is I'm going to read it all the way through. And we're going to walk through. We're going to unpack it a little bit. And what I'll do is look at really two lessons that we can look for. Reading in verse 1, it says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil Stop flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Just a beautiful story of God's provision in a very desperate situation. And so as we unpack this story, I want to look, as I said, at really two blessing, blessings, two lessons of blessing. I want to look at this First lesson is this, the blessing of hearing the cry for help and responding to meet the need. Hearing the cry for help and responding to meet the need. This is the blessing that Elisha had on him. And it wasn't just hearing or seeing the need, it's actually responding to the need. And so we have this story of a loving mother and a widow, but she's facing a very desperate situation if you go back and you look at verse 1, you'll see that it says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. So in addition to losing her husband, this woman is facing, this widow is facing these three big problems. Number one is her husband belonged to this company of prophets. And this company of prophets would have been prophets that were assigned to a specific area or city, a different locale, if you will. Whether it was Bethel or Jezreel or some other place in, in uh, Israel, they would be assigned there a company of prophets. But here's the problem. This company, it had no 401k. It had no survivor benefit plan. So she had nothing when her husband passed away. Also, in this case, they had a debt. Her husband and her had incurred some sort of debt, but in Jewish, in Jewish culture and in Jewish religion, there was no remedy for bankruptcy. You couldn't declare bankruptcy. The only remedy was that you could actually, under Mosaic law, was that the creditor, the one who was owed the debt, that person, could, they could come and they could demand repayment of the debt and they could force a family into what is considered indentured servitude until the debt was paid in full. And in this case her two sons were going to have to go work off and pay off the debt as they worked for who knows how long. And really the third problem she faced was widows in ancient Israel, the hope for them, the provision for, for them was provided by their children. And her two children, her two sons, were about ready to get taken away. So two words described her situation. 
desperate and hopeless. So where did she turn? She turned to the man of God. And I want you to think about Elisha's response. How did Elisha respond to her cry for help? Did he say, your husband, your husband should have planned better? Well, that's what happens when you go into debt, right? No. Elisha responded with grace, with mercy, with compassion, and he offered a solution. Let's look at verse 2 again. It says, Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? So instead of Elisha asking her, how did you get into this situation? He says, how can I help you get out of this situation? And what do you have that you can help yourself to get out from? And of course, her response, your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Did you get that? Nothing at all except a small jar of olive oil. Now, what's interesting is, is the word that they use in that text is a Hebrew word. It would have implied that this particular small jar she was talking about would have been used for anointing. So it was very precious. So there would have been a small amount because it would have been so expensive, so hard to come by. Because in the making of olive oil, there's actually a three, three-step process. As the olives are crushed, the first crushing brings out the most pure olive oil. And that's what would be used for the anointing piece. So this small jar would have been extremely small, something like this, perhaps. But olive oil also was considered like liquid gold would be today because it had several uses. Number one, symbolically, it was actually a symbol of God's blessing. See, God's blessing was always associated with the olive trees and the fruit of those olive trees, whether it's the olives or the actual olive oil. And also from a religious standpoint, the anointing, the anointing oil would be used as, as the, they would anoint kings and they would anoint priests. And then also the oil, olive oil, was used in the offerings that were given to God. So symbolically, religiously, and then also from a uh, medicinal standpoint, they would use olive oil for different purposes, whether it's treating a skin disease or whether it's treating a, a stomach ailment or even helping to remove earwax from the ears. Olive oil served a very useful purpose. And then finally, from a practical standpoint, olive oil was used just like it is today, cooking and baking, and in that time also used for lamps. So what we have in olive oil, we have this this picture-perfect example of God's blessings, both literally and figuratively for the widow. And so we have this story and I think about this it, as, as Elisha, think of the great joy that Elisha must have had when he comes back in verse 7, and God has poured out this blessing on this widow. And so he gets to see the blessing that, that has come now for her. And so I think there's a lesson for us, though. I think like Elisha, we've been blessed. We've been blessed in order to bring glory to God and, bring, and be a blessing to others, are we not? I think the ultimate blessing, if you think about it, is that if you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you are experiencing the ultimate blessing there is. Jesus Christ, Jesus offer us forgiveness of sins, salvation, eternity with him, and walking in his presence every day, the blessings of Jesus Christ. I love the way the apostle Paul puts it. He puts it in Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. He says, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Did you hear that? It's the gift of God. Grace, gift of God, blessings. Paul goes on to say, Not by works so that no one can boast. We didn't earn it. We didn't do anything. God, it's his grace. And then it finishes up, Paul says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I see this and I read these verses and I go, we have been blessed in order to be a blessing, to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Not that he's going to love us more. He's already loves us enough to give us Christ, Jesus but out of our love for him, we get to be a blessing to others. Amen? And so in response to that, we should be ready and willing 
to bless others, ready and willing to bless others to do good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. And one of the ways we do that is when there's a need, we have the opportunity to step into the gap like Elisha did to meet that need. Now, when we talk about meeting needs, I want to just have two caveats here and meeting the needs of others. Number one, we can't meet every need. We can't. Try as we might, (laughs) we can't meet every need. But God can. And he invites us to be part of the process to meet some of those needs. Amen? The second part of that is that every need is not financial. Most often when there's a need, it's a spiritual need. And so later on, I'm going to talk to you a couple of ways that we can help meet those spiritual needs. And so how do you know then when there's a need? And how do you know when it's time for you to step in and meet that need? Well, we can ask God to show you. We can ask God to show us and pray for his wisdom. Pray for discernment. Ask him, Lord, is there a way that I could meet this need? And God will show you. And so here's a great example of that. My wife and I, we were wrapping up our end of year giving. And um, my wife and I have been giving over the last 10 years to a campus-based uh, Christian ministry that works on college campuses. And this past year, as you can imagine, for a lot of these ministries, it's been really rough. And so financially, I looked at this family that we've been giving to, and I, I just started to pray. And I was, was just thinking, Lord, is there a need? Is there a specific need that my wife and I could bless this family with? Is there something that they need that we could be a blessing to? And I don't know why I did that. This was right at the end of the year, and I just felt this conviction to pray that prayer. Well, two days after we, I said that prayer and I told my wife about it, we got this letter from them. And the letter actually said that their daughter had been experiencing some severe pain in her jaw, and she was going to need some serious orthodontal, some sort of care. And so there was a need And they were asking anyone that had gifts to this family, had giving to them, would they consider a way to consider to pray, but also to give to help offset the cost of this procedure that was going to have to be done on this young girl. And my wife and I had prayed two days earlier. And we'd asked God to show us a need. And God answered, didn't he? And the amount that the Lord had put on our hearts, both of our hearts, we were able to give that amount. And imagine the blessing that we experienced when a couple of weeks later we got a personal letter from the family that said the amount that we gave nearly covered all the cost of that procedure. Blessed to be a blessing. That blessed us beyond measure that we were able to give to help that young girl. Lesson number two, the the blessing of taking simple steps of faith and seeing God move in mighty ways. Simple steps of faith and seeing God move in mighty ways. In verses three through six, we see Elisha helping this widow exercise and stretch her faith in God. Back at verse three, Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And he says, don't ask for just a few. Did you get that? Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. Now, can you imagine at that moment what the widow was thinking? Do you think she might have been thinking, um, like me maybe, Elisha, couldn't you just cancel the debt? No, Elisha wanted her to experience God's blessing in its fullest, right? Was partnering and stretching. And so what it says is, it says, She actually followed through, didn't she? She followed through. She didn't ask that question. It says, and we read later on in verse 5, it says, she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. Implied is that she went out and did what Elisha told her to. Go to all your neighbors, collect as many jars as you can, and then come back and your sons, close the door behind you. Now, why did she close the door behind? Why did Elisha make that? I I believe this was God speaking through Elisha, reminding her that this was going to be a private example of God's blessing. Not a public demonstration. There's times for those. This was a private demonstration of God's provision for her. This was personal for her and her boys. And so what happened is we see this great story. You go back in, 
they close the door behind, and, and there she is with her boys, and she says, okay, boys, um, bring me a jar. So they bring her a jar, and she takes this little vial, this little vessel of oil, and she begins to pour. And as she pours, the jar fills. And she's like, hey, boys, hey, yeah, mom. Bring me another jar. So then that jar is full, and then they bring her another jar. And the pouring continues and continues and continues. And jar after jar is filled, and as they fill, they set them aside, and they set them aside. And as she's pouring into the final jar, she says, Hey, boys, it's almost full. Bring me another jar. And they say, Mom, there are no more jars. And so the oil stopped flowing. So now there she has it. Can you imagine? I have no idea how many jars. Jars on the table, jars on the floor, overflowing. And then listen to what Elisha had told her. She's so excited. She's got to share with us, Elisha. So she went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live off what is left. Isn't that great financial advice, by the way? Right? Go sell the oil, pay your debt, and live off what's left. I wish I would have gotten this when I was a young guy, huh? Great financial advice, but really two things I want you just to think about. Notice who was with her in the house. Notice who was with her when this demonstration of God's provision took place. Her sons, right? So not only was this an opportunity to stretch her faith, but also to stretch their faith. And who wasn't with her in the house? Elisha. You see, I believe Elisha, in his own humble way, he wanted to ensure that, that God got the glory and that she saw that God was the provider and not the prophet. God is the provider. And so, folks, I think the lesson here for us is like the widow who took steps in faith and she was blessed and also, let's not forget that her sons were blessed as well, were they not? They were experienced the, abundance provision, the abundant provision of God and freedom. They wouldn't have to go into this indentured servitude for the rest of their lives. So the lesson for us is we've been blessed with opportunities to grow our faith and bless others in the process. To grow our faith. And I love the way the writer of Hebrews puts it in Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about for about what we do not see. Confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That's that confident assurance that says we trust in God no matter the circumstances and no matter what he calls us to do or where he calls us to go, we will be a blessing for God. Confident assurance. That's that courageous faith. And I think about my life, the number of times that God has called me and stretched my faith one time in particular, oh, about a year ago, I had, on a Sunday, I had a mother come up to me, and she asked about Bible studies for her young adult son. She said, are there any Bible studies for young adult men? I have a son who would love to be, you know, connected with other young guys and be able to grow in God's Word. And I said to her, I said, I don't know if we have anything like that, but uh, I said, I know we got some Bible studies in the morning, but, you know, I'll, I'll take a note, and, and we'll, be, we'll start praying for somebody to lead that if that's what God's will. Well, guess what? A week later, I had another mother come with a young adult son, and she asked, are there any um, Bible studies or small groups for young adult men? And I said, you know, it's funny, because last week somebody asked that same question, and we're praying about a leader for that. And the Lord nudged me. And what do you think the Lord nudged me and said to me? You're the leader. <laughs> You're the leader. And so what happened was, in that moment, I said, oh, wait, God, I was already leading a Bible study on Tuesday morning. I had great friends. I, I was like, but God, I'm comfortable. God said, no. I want you to lead that study. And so in February of last year, before COVID, we started out. We had four young adult men that came. A year later, we've gone all online. We've only been online since COVID. We have 19 guys that are signed up. And each week, we average 10 and 11 young guys, 20 and 30-year-old men who are gathering online, encouraging one another. Yeah, to God be the glory, because that's God. 
Because if left to my own devices, I would have just stayed nice and comfortable on that Tuesday morning Bible study. But God wanted to stretch my faith. And now what's beautiful for me is, now I just get to facilitate these guys on Tuesday nights. I get to lead the study, but I get to watch them pray for one another, encourage one another, and say, you know what? If you ever need anything, call me. I'll help you in that. That's the beauty of God's blessing. Allow us to stretch our faith to be stretched and strengthened in the process. So I want to ask now, how about you? What are some ways that you could take some courageous steps of faith to be a blessing to others? You may say, well, it doesn't seem like very courageous, but trust me, in a culture that says, me, 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 and mine, 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 when we are looking at blessing others and taking, that requires courage, brothers and sisters. Courageous steps, what are some ways? And some of you might be asking, well, Pastor Sean, I don't really have many blessings to offer others. If you only knew my story. You might be like the widow saying, I've got nothing at all except, but maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's a talent. Maybe it's a hobby. Maybe it's an experience that God has provided for you. That is a blessing. So I want to encourage you to think about these five different ways that you can take steps and be a blessing to others. And the first is a blessing of gathering and growing with others. Gathering and growing with others. And here at Shoreline Church, we call that consistent community. And I wonder if some of us, some, of, some may have grown comfortable in this season of COVID remaining in isolation. I wonder if there are some that would say that. Yes, Pastor Sean, I've grown comfortable. And maybe you have to ask yourself, is it time to connect with others? And I would say that being a member of the body of Christ, one of the greatest blessings we have, we're part of a family, a body. Don't miss the blessing and remain in isolation. Re-engage in the body of Christ. Be blessed and be a blessing to others. And I don't know what that looks like for you, but I want to encourage you. We offer online Bible studies. We offer online small groups. We offer online classes. So many different ways for you to connect if, if it's online, but also here on campus as well. And we're getting ready to launch even more. Don't miss the blessing. And don't believe the lies of the enemy, by the way. The lies of the enemy that says your presence doesn't matter. You don't have anything to offer. Folks, your presence does matter to God. He loves you. And he has blessed you. And I want to encourage you to be a blessing to others. To bring those experiences. To bring those joys. To bring those highs and lows of your life. And offer and share with others. Because that's exactly what someone might need Someone might be walking through something that you've already walked through and you can be an encouragement to them to keep walking. Be a blessing to others. The second blessing is the blessing of serving others. And here at Shoreline, we call that humble service. And we understand that there's many opportunities in our world, in our city, in our local community here, obviously, that where you can serve. But we want to encourage you to think about serving right here at Shoreline. And I want you just to think for a moment, as you came into the parking lot today, you came in the parking lot, you were greet, greeted by our parking team. And then you came up the steps and you checked in at one of the check-in stations. There you were greeted by our check-in station team, our welcome team. And then somebody helped you find your seat. And then you sat and you, and you enjoyed uh, this participation and kind of before the service started. And then once the service started, you got to worship. We had a worship team. All of these people said yes to God. I want to be a blessing and serve so that you can be blessed. And now we have the opportunity to be a blessing to others as well. And you might ask, oh, does Shoreline have any needs? We have some needs, folks. In fact, we're getting ready to launch, relaunch a lot of our indoor worship service. We're going to offer that beginning April 11th. And we're going to be offering more opportunities for you to gather and worship indoors. And so to do that, we have some immediate needs. We have some immediate needs. Our hospitality team. Our volunteer service in our outdoor services as well as indoor services. We've got to essentially double our capacity. And where do we think we're going to find the people to do that? It's right here, Shoreline. You've been blessed to be a blessing. So if that's you, if you feel like the Lord's nudging you to maybe step in and serve in that capacity, I want to encourage you after service back there in the connection sent, Nicole and Heather are back there, and they would love to talk to you about what that might look like for you. 
I want to consider that. How can I be a blessing in serving others? How about the blessing of giving to others? You know, Pastor Keith gave us a beautiful example of how your giving matters. And some of you might be saying right now, well, Pastor Sean, you have no idea how financially upside down I am. I wish I could give. I'm so far in debt. So maybe for you, a courageous step of faith might be, maybe you would say, you know what? I, I, I should really check out that money management God's way class that Pastor Kevin shared a couple weeks ago. Maybe that's the first step for you so that you then in turn can be a blessing to other later, later, later on. One step that you might want to take. In addition, a simple way that you can bless others is this small little vessel right here. We call it the, 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 the change your world boxes is what they are. But these boxes, as you take home with you, and if you were just to fill them up with change, fill them up with change, you bring them back, these boxes go to pay for solar audio Bibles that will go somewhere in the world through world mission, and they will be able to bring Bibles, audio Bibles, to people all around the world in their native language. Simple way that you can take steps to give to others is to fill that little box with change. We also can be a blessing to others by praying for others. The blessing of praying for others. One possible way, we talked earlier about this idea of, of most needs being spiritual. Here's one way you can help meet one of those spiritual needs is to pray for people. And I got to tell you that one of the things I found this past year, that especially in COVID, uh, whenever I've asked someone if I can pray for them right then and there, I don't think I've had anybody, yeah, I can't, nobody has said no to me. Nobody has said no, I, I really couldn't use prayer right now. There are so many needs out there. So I want to encourage you to be a blessing to others, to offer to pray for and pray with others. That's one way that you can be a blessing. And finally, the blessing of sharing with others. The blessing of sharing with others. And we call that organic outreach here at Shoreline. I'm talking about is the blessing of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others. The greatest blessing we can offer is Jesus a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we have been called by God to be a blessing to others, to share the good news. Now, if you're a Christian here today, that means that somebody shared the gospel with you at one point. So who in your life right now are you praying for, walking with, and sharing the love of Christ? And eventually, as the Spirit leads, will you be bold enough to share the gospel with? Who in your life right now doesn't know Jesus, the Lord's put them on your heart, and will you continue to walk with them and share the love of Christ? So as I wrap up today, I want to share just a short excerpt from a text I received from my daughter, Amanda, a few weeks ago. Her husband, Jesse, many years ago, he shared the gospel with a young military officer. And recently, the man texted him and said, I don't know if you remember me, but he said that Jesse, my son-in-law, was the only one in six years of military service that had shared the gospel with him. Six years in the military, and it was only one person shared the gospel. He said that he wanted Jesse to know that he accepted Christ this past year. And this is some years after Jesse had shared he also said that he had met a Christian woman and they married and they have one child. And this is what he said. He just wanted Jesse to know. He just wanted Jesse to know. My question is, what if Jesse would not have taken the time to share the gospel, to be a blessing to this man, how his life would be different today? And now his life has changed for eternity and as Keith shared earlier, generations for this man. Never underestimate the blessings that God has given you and how they might be a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, you have blessed us beyond the heavenly realms. You have blessed us with every spiritual blessing, your word says. And Jesus, as we gather here as a family of brothers and sisters, for those who know you, Jesus, we pray that as only you can do, 
Would you stir our hearts? Would you move our hearts as we think about the different ways that we might be able to bless others, even if it's one step of courageous faith, Jesus? We pray that you would give us the strength, whether it's giving or whether it's sharing, whether it's gathering again, whether it's praying, whatever it might be, Lord. We pray that you would show us this week and the days to come. And may we be found faithful as Elisha and Elijah and the widow demonstrate courageous faith in partnership with you, Father. So Lord, we love you and we thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, as we close our service, before I send you out with a word of blessing, I just want a couple of words, a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, I want to give you a special invitation. Uh, as I mentioned, we're getting ready to relaunch many of our ministries uh, on the, all of the Shoreline campus again. And so we want to invite you uh, to be part of something very exciting we're calling Spring Cleaning Days. Spring cleaning days. We would love to invite you to come either next Friday in the morning or Friday afternoon or Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and then next Sunday and then the Saturday after that. We want to invite you to come and be part of a volunteer team that are going to go in and do several tasks inside, the, 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 inside our worship center, inside the building, inside our classrooms, but also all around our campus here on the outside as well. So if you would say, you know what, I've got a few hours, I'd love to be a blessing to others, I want to encourage you to go ahead and you can talk with Heather back there at the, the Connection Center and she'll take care of that. Or you can go right to our website and you can see right on there it talks about spring cleaning days. I want to invite you to be part of that. And also if you need prayer today, prayer for anything, a great joy in your life or maybe struggle that you're going through right now. I want to encourage you, if you're here in the courtyard or down here in the parking lot, our prayer team, Pastor Dennis and his team are up there on the, the dock. They'd love to pray with you. And then also for those of you who are watching online, we want to encourage you to go ahead and, and text that, send your prayer to that message. You'll see the number right there. We'd love to pray for you and those specific needs that you have. And then finally, if you're new here today, this is your first time at Shoreline Church, or maybe you've never uh, taken the next step to learn more about Shoreline, we encourage you, if you're here in the courtyard, down in the parking lot, go ahead and head over to the Connection Center. They want to say thank you for being here. They've got a gift for you. And then finally, if you are online and you had the opportunity, this is your first time, thank you as well for joining us. You go ahead and text the word welcome to the number you see on your screen, and we'll have a special digital connection card. We'd love to get to know you more and a special gift for you as well. And so would you, if you're able, would you stand and receive the blessing? So I'm going to send you out with the words that God gave to Moses that were supposed to be given through the his brother Aaron, as he sent the Israelites with a word of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in God's blessing and be a blessing to others. Amen? God bless you. Have a great day. I want to personally invite you to join us for Easter services at Shoreline Church. We will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, sing some amazing music, and I believe in be inspired. As we move into springtime, nothing's more inspiring than being with people singing, celebrating, and rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Please join us for Easter services.